Rico the Chilean, a powerful individual operating within the League of Bosses, established not only friendships, but above all business ties with Daniel Kinahan, a prominent kingpin of the Irish cartel. Their collaboration reportedly took shape primarily during their regular stays under the Spanish sun, a well-known meeting point for traffickers seeking to establish their criminal activities. In one of their missions, Rico went as far as sending Noffel to Ireland. It is there that Noffel hides in a luxurious apartment in Dublin, directly linked to the Kinahans. From this location, Noffel orchestrates, among other things, operations carried out on Dutch soil. It is important to note that during this time, a powerful alliance was formed between two organizations, Ridwan Tahis in Utrecht and Rico's in Amsterdam, with Noffel acting as an intermediary. Their common objective is believed to have been to eliminate competition in the Netherlands. It has become our main task in life. As soon as we stop, we die. If it happens, then it is over, and the people around us should never let it happen. But it will never happen, inshallah. However, Noffel's freedom is quickly cut short, as the police conduct a targeted operation as part of an investigation into Kinahan clan activities in Dublin, precisely at the moment when Noffel is in the apartment. In Irish newspapers, Rumours circulated that Noffel held valuable information about the Kinahans. This allegedly led to his transfer to a highly secure prison out of fear of elimination by his own allies. One hypothesis suggests that the plan was to injure him during his stay in the previous prison in Dublin to claim an urgent transfer to a nearby hospital. It was during the journey in a penitentiary van that Kinahan's men were supposed to ambush and eliminate him on the spot. In another version, some suggest this maneuver might have been orchestrated to free him. However, none of these hypotheses have been confirmed. Finally, Noffel was extradited from Ireland to the Netherlands aboard a military helicopter. He was forced to wear a straitjacket to prevent any escape attempts. After Noffel's arrest, Rico and Ridwan became even more determined. They reportedly even considered eliminating Prosecutor Pluey in the Netherlands due to his impact on all the investigations that exposed the role of this underworld trio. Sir, are we going to let that ploy sleep? <laughs> and Mauna, sir, <laughs> I like you. <laughs> These are real thoughts, but no. We wait and see if we can do it differently. We told people about it at the time and had a terrible headache. Hermano, sir, we do what we must do, but we'll have to act cleverly and tactically. On April 17th, 2016, Destiny tragically strikes one of the team's rivals, Samir, as he prepares to go to the mosque with his daughter. However, from the very next day after this event, the duo continues to maintain a close contact and both show a strangely affectionate demeanor towards each other. Some have gone so far as to nickname them Rico and Ridwan, the Brangelina of the underworld, alluding to the famous showbiz couple Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. This comparison emphasizes how their motivation to continue their activities is far from being exhausted, including their unwavering bond within the criminal world. Once again, PGPs would be linked, according to the court, to Ridwan and Rico. Amano, sir, I am by your side, until the end and beyond. They will all disappear. There is no other path or choice. You play with my feelings, and I stand with you just as Noffel stands with you and me. Thus, we are united. And Hermano, sir, whatever we can do, we will do it to make these rats feel what strength is, what a family is, what true brotherhood means. You'll see, I need nothing. Only my brothers are everything in my life. Money means nothing to me. 
nothing at all. They will leave because they must go away. And we have nothing, absolutely nothing to prove to each other. And that is what will always make us stronger than all those other rats. Money is their god. Money is everything to them. And it means nothing without having true people around and being loyal. For three years, no one in Dubai will be safe. No one! And we are a family, not just with words, but with actions, inshallah. And Nafel must know that. He is temporarily absent, so we will become even more ruthless than ever. In addition to collaborating with Rico's organization, the group led by Ridwan also focuses on eliminating its former targets. These targets potentially appear on a hit list discovered during the 26 Copper investigation. It's worth recalling that this liquidation group was allegedly an operational unit within Ridwan's circle, but was dismantled by the police in the summer of 2015. During that operation, the authorities uncovered a real arsenal, among other things. Furthermore, during a raid at one of the suspect's apartments as part of the same investigation, memory cards were found. These memory cards contained photos and videos of different individuals. Among these targets was Abderrahim, also known by the alias Appy, who had unknowingly been filmed in a McDonald's in Nuraheim in January 2015, along with a friend. The conversation heard in the video revealed that the two observers were slightly panicked when the duo left the McDonald's and approached them. One of them even suggested to the other to pretend to roll a joint to avoid being uncovered, to appear as natural as possible, and above all, without looking at them. According to the findings of the justice, the secret recordings confirm the image of a squad preparing to commit elimination acts. Due to these events, the police warned Appy at the time that he was in danger. During his interrogation, he stated being deeply shocked by the warning and feared retaliation, especially because he had previously discovered a tracking device under his car. After a moment of denial, he finally admitted his involvement in criminal activities that could cause him trouble. He alluded to drug trafficking and then specified that an influential person had not received the agreed payment. However, he refused to disclose the identity of this person as long as the audio recording was ongoing in the room. Investigators even mentioned the possibility of a protection program but it is not clear whether concrete measures were eventually taken in this regard. However, what is perfectly clear is that Ridouan's entourage no longer leaves any doubt about the fate reserved for Appy, as evidenced by an encrypted message. This snitch must go. According to Underworld testimonies, it is reported that initially, Appy had sold several kilograms of coke without honoring the payment owed to Ridouan which led to some problems. In any case, there are enough elements to set up the new mission. As part of this plan, a close associate of Noffel, the rapper well known under the name JJ, was recruited to lure Appy into a trap. We are now at Club Air on May the 9th, 2016, in the heart of Amsterdam. Surveillance camera footage reveals JJ and his team arriving at the nightclub shortly after midnight. They head towards a reserved table in the VIP area. A little over an hour later, Appy and his friends also enter the club. At 2.14 a.m., the two men have their first conversation in the VIP area, and both groups seem to enjoy the lively atmosphere, laughing and joking together. Appy even appears friendly by putting his arm around JJ. Around 3 a.m., Appy leaves the club but remains in contact with JJ via WhatsApp. Eventually, JJ invites Appy to a party that will take place in an apartment in Kickenstein, located in the Bailmer neighborhood. In the latter part of the night, Appy is at the club Ibiza, 
while JJ's team heads to Bailman. It is at this moment that an exchange of messages begins. Buddy. Hey, bro. Where are you? I'm now at Ibiza. I'm going now with three girls, including my girlfriend, to Bailman. Okay. Can I come too? I'm with these women. We're going to fuck. I'll send you the location soon. Come with Viagra. Okay, brother. Come. It seems that JJ is not providing him with enough information about the exact location of the party. Where is it, bro? You're not sending me any address. Nothing. Okay, wait. I'm with three women. Viagra. So, where are you? Should I come to your place or what? Bailma. Appy is starting to get impatient as he still hasn't received the address and he is starting to consider doing something else. Otherwise, I'm going to make other plans. Kickenstein, are you coming or what? Number. Number. Are you coming or not? I need that pill. Yeah, I'm coming. Tell them your name is Bilal. Your Maha's cousin who plays football. JJ informs Appy that he introduced him to the girls as a family member of a famous football player, which could allow him to have a really good night. I'm here. Answer, bro. Yeah. I'm at the door. Appy tries several times to find the right apartment in the building, but what he doesn't know is that JJ after consuming laughing gas, has already left and has been on the way to Rotterdam for a while. All of this was just a setup to trap Appy because the address provided by JJ is actually just an apartment where a 65 year old woman lives. Come to the last porch. How much time? This woman says you're not here. When Appy arrives near the last porch, the shooter is already waiting for him. Despite his attempt to escape, he is eventually shot down in the hallway. The prosecutor described this execution as relentless, in which JJ played a crucial role. However, the rapper presents an alternative version of the story as his defense. According to him, he was approached by an individual named Mr. X at Club Air in Amsterdam that night, but he categorically refuses to disclose his name for safety reasons. JJ claims that Mr. X asked him to arrange a meeting between himself and Appy because Appy owed him money and hadn't shown up for previously arranged meetings. JJ states that he agreed to this task in order to receive 1,500 euros as compensation for his role as intermediary. However, he insists he was not aware of Mr. X's true intentions. JJ asserts that if it weren't for the setup involving the women, Appy would never have come there. According to JJ's version of events, he claims that after discovering that Appy had been eliminated at the agreed upon location, he felt betrayed by Mr. X. He decided to cut all contact with him considering the 1500 euros as dirty money and wanted nothing more to do with it. However, this version did not convince anyone in court and JJ was eventually sentenced to 18 years in prison. Despite his incarceration, he continues to produce music, using his brother to portray his role in music videos. One of his songs even became a golden disc, and his music career doesn't seem to be ending even while in prison. As for Appy, it appears that he was one of the witnesses the prosecution wanted to question before the investigating judge in the 26 Copper case. The interrogation was scheduled for June 2016, but unfortunately his assassination left a void in the crucial information 
that the justice system could have obtained from him. However, among the witnesses to be heard by the judge is the rival Ranko Szczekic, another criminal who also appears in secretly recorded videos by the 26 Copper Squad. It's important to remember that the first person to shed light on Rido Antahi's organization was Ibrahim, also known as the Butcher. He made several statements to the police, highlighting the gradual rise of Ridwan's team when Tahi's name was not known in the underworld at all. In addition to identifying Ridwan as the supreme leader, he also mentioned the name of Saeed Razuki as his right-hand man. The intervention of the butcher with the police angered Ridwan, who reportedly immediately placed him at the top of the blacklist. Once again, from the PGP account that the justice system attributes to Ridwan, a message has been sent to one of his associates, revealing, You better kill that butcher. He falls asleep as soon as he retracts his statement, and everyone can know it. He's done. Him and all the rest. He won't have anything to take back. On June the 10th, 2016, as a witness before the investigating judge, Still as part of the 26 Copper investigation, the Butcher explained that his family had been seriously threatened around Christmas 2015 due to his incriminating testimonies concerning the group linked to Tahi. At that time, the group allegedly presented a whole stack of statements he had made to the Butcher's family, even though they were supposed to remain confidential. Indeed, given the infiltration of Ridwan's group into all sectors of society, it appears that the butcher's statement ended up on a USB drive. This USB drive circulated widely within the presumed Ridwan's organization, suggesting that there really is nothing that can escape his grasp. Due to the complexity of finding the butcher, an order was allegedly given to eliminate people from his circle. Don't worry, but you should know that when the Butcher goes to sleep, the Yugo, the Chino, and their little brother do too. In his interrogations, the Butcher had predicted that the group linked to Tahi would try to contact him through his close associates. Yugo specifically referred to Ranko Szczekic, while Chinos referred to the LM brothers. We are still in June 2016, and the Butcher remains isolated from everyone. Ranko, on the other hand, is supposed to be heard as a witness on the 30th in this investigation where Ridwan's name appears for the first time. According to sources close to the underworld and his lawyer, Ranko had no intention of making accusatory statements and claimed not to have any problems with anyone. Such a statement may seem quite naive, considering that operations directly targeting Ranko had already taken place in Utrecht under the remote control of Saeed Razuki. A car equipped with cameras had even been positioned in front of Ranko's apartment, allowing observers to map out his daily routine. The pressure was mounting to get rid of him as quickly as possible, as evidenced by some messages. Tomorrow, we're going to get that dog. During an operation, it appears that Ranko, completely drunk, had stayed in a neighboring area in Utrecht while the others were waiting for his return home. It turns out that Ridwan even sent a message suggesting that he hoped one of the Chinos, meaning one of the LM brothers, would help bring the drunk Ranko home so that both of them could be eliminated. However, the plan failed because there were many police officers in the surrounding area. After several unsuccessful attempts, it was finally on a warm summer evening, June 22nd, that two men dressed in black arrived on a scooter and executed Ranko in front of his own house. He was living there with his wife and four young children. According to the prosecution, Ridwan allegedly sent... <laughs> That hydrocephalus is no longer alive. That dog received five or six bullets in the head. His children will have grown up without their father. 
In the all important moments that mark their lives, such as learning to swim, getting their school diploma, leaving home or getting married, they'll feel the absence of their father. 